This happened on the last day of June, 2016, celebrated by the Pentagon as LGBT Pride Month. That was a tradition under Barack Obama. There were two phases. Phase one, if you're in the military and you're transgender, you can stay. Effective October 1 of last year. Second phase was supposed to go into effect this July. It said we're going to recruit outside new people to be transgenders in the military. But on the night before that date, June 30, the Secretary of Defense, uh, Mr. Mattis, said, no, we're not going to go there. And he rescinded that rule. Actually, he didn't rescind it. He, sus he suspended it for six months. That meant that all the policies would remain in effect until New Year's Eve of 2018, when the ball comes down. Well, that wasn't satisfactory. What's going to change between now and January 2016? Well, enter our president, Donald Trump. He issued three tweets. He said, we're not going to have transgenders in our military. He called for a return to the policies in effect uh, before Barack Obama came along. Well, you all saw what happened. The media went nuts. I mean, they just freaked out. And even conservative media, people like Charles Krauthammer, most of the time, a uh, sensible person, he's, he, th this meme got started that the military was resisting the president. Krauthammer said, oh, well, the military's telling the president, uh, go jump in the lake. Why would he say that? Because the day after the tweets, the generals didn't move to remove transgenders from the military right away. Well, that was a ridiculous premise. A tweet is not a, an, an executive order. What, what were they doing? I knew exactly what they were doing. They're trying to create a meme, a false story, uh, pretending that the military is not in tune with the president on this issue. They're trying to forget that three out of four of the military service chiefs, just a few months before in June, had asked for at least a two-year delay because they saw that it would be problematic to bring into the military outside people, new recruits who were transgenders. That, that little fact, inconvenient fact, wasn't even reported except by my organization, CMR, and the Associated Press, but the Associated Press sort of conveniently forgot about that. Well, on August 25th, as we predicted, President Trump issued a formal guidance, and the guidance said three things. He suspended the order to recruit new transgenders for six months. He halted the use of Department of Defense funds for transgender surgeries, and he directed the Department of Defense to recommend what to do with transgenders in the military right now. And all this is supposed to, the recommendations by next February, supposed to go into effect by March. Well, this is not a settled issue because we don't know who will be on the panel that the secretary is going to set up. I tell you, I'm, I can, I'm working on this tirelessly in the back of the room even today, trying to find out what is going on because there's a lot of controversy behind the scenes and we don't know how this issue is going to be resolved yet. But we do have a little bit of time, so let's take this time, this opportunity to discuss what is this issue all about. I have to tell you, I was reluctant to get into this issue. My file on all the, all the controversies in the civilian schools, my file just kept getting fatter and fatter and fatter, and I said, I don't want to go into that issue. I mean, people, I mean, somebody who thinks that they're the opposite gender, you have to have sympathy for people like that. That must be a terrible way to have to live. It's, it's a kind of an issue that a lot of people are reluctant to get into, but I'll tell you why we have to get involved in this issue, and we already are. Gender dysphoria is a psychological condition. It involves confusion about sexual identity. It's one of several conditions. For instance, if, if a person study, or if they suffer from uh, anorexia or bulimia, they think they're fat, even though they're real thin. And people around them know this person has a psychological problem, and they try to help them with that psychological problem. The difference is that people who are confused about gender identity, all of a sudden they're a civil rights issue. All of a sudden they're a special class. And people are not helping them. They're perpetuating the problem that these people have. So if you have a condition that makes you non-deployable, then you're not really eligible for military service. And this is, this is a common fallacy. People say, well, if somebody's qualified and they want to serve their country, we should praise them and we should let them serve. But if they are not deployable 
for physical reasons, medical non-qualification, then they're not really qualified, are they? They can serve their country in some other way. In the last, uh, uh, the outgoing months of the um, Obama administration, the Department of Defense and the various services issued directives, everything was done formally in the Pentagon, directives, instructions, memos, toolkits, handbooks, training programs, 15 of them. My organization analyzed the whole bunch of them back in March, and we pointed out what was wrong with every one of them. If you want to see ideology, pure, nonsensical ideology being put into public policy, take a look at those directives. These are official policy directives of the Department of Defense. They all start with the premise that LG, the LGBT delusion that gender is assigned at birth and can be altered with changes in appearance. Well, who does the assigning? <laughs> Nobody ever explains who did the assigning. It's, it's a nonsensical situation, but they're saying that if you change the gender marker, that means a bureaucratic check. You know how it says male, female? If you change the check from female to male or vice versa, then everybody else in the military has to accept that. This is a mass delusion kind of thing. It's not about being quiet in your sexuality if you happen to be gay. It, me it has to be public. It involves public acceptance of the delusion that you think that you are a woman or you think you are a man even though you're not. So the problem is science gets in the way because DNA chromosomes are what determine gender. Gender is not assigned at birth. It is identified at birth, okay? It's pretty easy to see. You can ask any doctor. And every cell of the human body has chromosomes, X or XX or XY. So if, you, if you're confused about any of this, then certainly somebody needs to explain the facts of life, shall we say, but instead the Department of Defense has made this a big political movement and have declared that transgendered persons are now a protected class. Now, if you're thinking, well, this is only a few people in the military, this can't hurt anything, well, consider, if your son is an army doctor, your daughter is a Navy nurse, he or she is approached by a person who is confused about their gender identity, and the commander orders them that they must participate in transgender therapies or surgeries, and they have no choice about it. Now, if they believe that removing healthy body organs violates medical ethics or religious convictions, they have no option but to leave. This is, where, this is just one small area. It's actually, it's a big area. Doctors and nurses, there's a lot of them in the military. If they have a moral dilemma and the only option is to leave, then we've got a problem. A Navy toolkit says, it's right there explicitly stated, and I got it from a nurse, actually a, a former a mil, a medical person in the Navy. It says that the commanding officer may not dis disapprove of what the, uh, the person claiming to be transgender wants. So once they say, well, I think I'm a person of the opposite sex, everybody has to jump and it politicizes the military health system. Instead of getting competent medical care, they're getting politicized medical care. This is not right, folks, this is not right. For people who suffer from a psychological condition, it makes no sense. But it's amazing how the idea of transgender surgery has gained acceptance, at least among people who are fascinated by Bruce Caitlyn Jenner or Bradley Chelsea Manning. These glamorous images of these two, it's part of a cultural wave and it's based on unreality. The realities of gender dysphoria are not so glamorous. Johns Hopkins University Hospital, which pioneered in gender surgeries back in the 1960s, according to Dr. Paul McHugh, who leads the Department of Psychology at Johns Hopkins, he said that they were doing surgeries and they did a 10-year study. And they found out that the people who underwent these surgeries were not getting any better in their psychological maladies. They discontinued doing surgeries because you don't do radical surgery if at the end you don't get any benefit. And rates of uh, the inclination to suicide remains very, very high. This is one of the facts that is not being told to people in the Department of Defense. And why is that? Because they disregard all the credible studies and they've ordered 
uh, that all these controversial surgeries occur in military hospitals on the taxpayer's dime because they're being advised by guess who? The LGBT activist groups. How do I know this? Because I've read it in the Department of Defense documents. All right, they've been hanging out in the Pentagon for a long time. Dr. Ryan Anderson at the Heritage Foundation has pointed out that 41% of transgender personnel, of transgenders in general, will attempt suicide, compared to 4.6 in the general population. Those having surgery are 19 times more likely to die by suicide. This is a dangerous psychological condition, dangerous to the people who have gender dysphoria and everybody around them who shares all the problems associated with that. When a person undergoes surgery that attempts to change gender, the recovery time is approximately 225 days. That's almost a full year. Now that's not counting the time spent on psychological counseling. Obviously a 225 day absence plus psychological counseling is a matter of military readiness. It doesn't matter how good that person is. If they're not there, they're not gonna help the unit win or prepare for a war. Um, and these directives, I haven't even mentioned, something called real life experience, RLE. It has its own acronym. Everything in the Pentagon has an acronym. RLE means you get to go off and pretend like you're a person of the opposite sex. This could be done on a short-term basis. You can be a man by day and go out as a woman by night. Or you can take three months or a full year off for RLE. And guess who has to pick up all the work that needs done while that, that person is away on RLE? Well, you know the answer. It's everyone else. The costs for lost time for this sort of thing are not even calculated in the costs of this thing. So we also know that the hormones that are involved to create masculinized women and feminized men have side effects. We know this, one of the Pentagon documents says, uh, we have to have personal reliability programs to watch for the side effects of hormone treatments. Um, and, and the toolkit, the Navy toolkit says, well, powerful hormones could affect a person's readiness for flight duty or diving operations. Really? And yet, we're to believe that people who are undergoing treatment for gender dysphoria are qualified to be in the military? I don't think so. So I was on a radio program the other day and the caller says, well, it doesn't matter. You know, transgenders can do the desk jobs. But then when I asked him, well, wait a minute. Is this group of people more special than everyone else? And what about the people who have to take their places when it's time to deploy? Or when it's time to go overseas or it's time to go to sea in regular operations? And the most important question is, how does this, how does this improve readiness? military readiness to deter or fight wars, what the Secretary of Defense has called combat lethality. Another transgender handbook includes a set of 19 scenarios for training purposes, some of which are simply bizarre. For example, what does a commander do when a guy named Marty comes to him, a soldier, and he says, well, I'm, I'm pregnant? The answer is, well, you have to figure out how to break the news to everyone else. That's the answer, okay? Then scenario 14 is about a female transitioning to male status. And this person wants to wear a male swimsuit in competition. What's the commander to do? The LGBT experts recommend, well, everybody should wear t-shirts. Really? So if all the other teams in competition don't have that impediment of t-shirts, well, who cares? It's all about the transgender being able to do what the transgender wants. Scenario 15, the discomfort of a male to female transitioning person who encounters resistance from women who don't want him in their locker rooms, their showers. The, the problem there is the women are resisting. The women are the problem. They have to get used to this. That's the way these scenarios play out. I told you this was bizarre. In all cases, the confused commanders are referred to Service Center Coordination Cells, another acronym, SCCC advisors, these are all LGBT folks. This is the way the Pentagon has this thing set up. Properly understood, the healthcare uh, system in the military is supposed to be a force multiplier. It's supposed to keep personnel and their families healthy so that when the time comes, they can deploy. 
Persons suffering from gender dysphoria deserve competent, objective medical care. But when the system is designed to go only in one direction, that politicizes it, and it's wrong. And it's very expensive, too. We're talking about open-ended expenses, uh, not just for people in the military, but I'm going to just say this quickly. The, the activist groups want children to be involved as well. They are demanding that dependents also have access to the same surgeries and medical care that active duty people do. Logical, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about vulnerable children. Sometimes kids do get confused. They don't even know what sex is, for heaven's sakes. And there was a story, it was the very day that the policies went into effect in October of last year. New York Times talking about this beautiful little child, child of an Army Staff Sergeant at Fort Belvoir, and the, the child had been getting hormone block tr blocker treatments costing $15,000. Apparently, the, these hormone blockers are legal under medical um, benefits for, for dependents. The National Center for Transgender Equality wants the Defense Department to provide irreversible hormone and surgical treatments for children like this winsome little child. Never mind that about 90% or more of kids, once they reach puberty, the problem is resolved, okay? But the transgender groups don't care. Now, if you want an authority on this issue, I would suggest you look at what Camille Paglia had to say. Camille Paglia, who calls herself gender fluid, very interesting woman, she said she's horrified by the escalating prescription of puberty blockers to children who are confused she says, have the adults gone mad? Children are now being used for fashionable medical experiments with unknown long-term results. The LGBT left is also targeting veterans, the VA. They want all these benefits extended to the VA, even though our veterans are having a hard time as it is getting the benefits and the care that they need. And again, I have to stress this, none of this is going to improve mission readiness and combat lethality, the very purpose of our military. Now, I want to just say a word about costs, and I hope all of you have the two-pager that was put out on your, your um, uh, seats earlier. The advocates routinely play down the costs. Aaron Belkin of the Palm Center with a straight face said, surgery would only cost $30,000. He's out of his mind. The Philadelphia Center for Transgender Surgery publishes a price list of these various ectomies and plasties. Okay, I'm not going to tell you all the... Latin words, they're cringeworthy. They really are. Male to female surgery, $140,450. Female to male, $124,400. But in the 2016 RAND Corporation report, the one that they, everybody keeps quoting, they, they come up with a ridiculously small figure that Representative Vicki Hartzler of Missouri demolished. She looked at the RAND report and she compared reality with what they were saying. She came out with a summary and she said, this, we're talking about at least 1.3 billion over 10 years, not counting the hormone treatments. And I'm, gonna th I'm not gonna throw a lot of numbers at you, but Family Research Council esti estimated it even higher, 3.7 billion over 10 years. President Trump is exactly right. This program is a gross misuse of defense dollars. It would rob scarce funds for more pressing needs and it needs to stop. And it's not the only social issue. I haven't had a chance to talk about one that's been very close to me for many years, women in combat, and I'll answer any questions that you might have later on. Uh, it all starts with this concept of diversity as a strategic imperative. Women in combat has now been extended into the infantry because uh, the Pentagon has decided that diversity is a strategic imperative. In fact, there was a memo that was passed um, right after the Trump administration affirming this by the Obama holdovers. Now, we were promised when women were ordered into the infantry on the same involuntary basis as men, standards wouldn't be lowered, remember that? Well, the Marines are trying. The Marines are doing their best to keep standards high, but I have to tell you, the Army is really screwing this up. I heard from a confidential active duty source recently. He informed me that the promised gender neutral standards to qualify women for the combat arms were talked about but they've never been implemented. All there is is a physical fitness test. The physical fitness test is gender normed. You take it twice a year, and the women get high scores because the standards are lower. 
So they get assigned to the infantry and the arm, armor and the artillery and these other combat arms units. There is no test to hold them to what the men must do. 